And we're live. Hello, everyone. And welcome to this event for the amazing cookbook, Dana's Bakery. I'm Carter. I use they, them pronouns. And I'm the event coordinator here at Astoria Bookshop. Before we get started, um, I just want to go through just a couple of housekeeping things. You will have the opportunity to ask questions during the last 15-ish minutes of this. Uh, if you have questions throughout, you can put them in that chat on the right over there. Um, or you can um, put them in the chat function. Um, usually when you type a question into the chat, um, it'll pop up and say like, do you wanna put this in the question box? And you can just click that and it'll go right over. That's a way easier way to ask questions, but you're welcome to do it either way. I'll keep an eye on both. <laughs> Um, you can also chat with each other over there. So while you're baking, if you just want to feel some camaraderie while we're doing this, you can chat away and also like say encouraging things to Dana if you'd like. Um, <laughs> All the encouragement would be so lovely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we will kick you out if you participate in any trolling, any racial, ethnic, or homophobic slurs. Basically, we are asking all of you to be nice and respectful towards one another. Isn't that finally, nice? Yeah, exactly. Nice, yes. Um, finally, there's also a button at the bottom, right down there, um, that offers the option to buy, buy a signed copy of this book. So be sure to grab one. We only have a couple left in stock in the shop, um, but we'll get more. And so if we oversell during this event, um, we'll be able to order more and you'll get it as soon as we get it. And um, I'll sign and, them. And yeah. I'll sign them. So yeah. we'll make sure that happens. Um, so now let's get things started and I'll introduce our fantastic guest. Now would be a good time for everyone to grab all of their ingredients, all of your items if you plan to bake with us, or you can just chill out and listen to me. <laughs> all right, so Dana Pollock uses she, her pronouns, is a trained pastry chef and the CEO and founder of Dana's Bakery, one of the first ever online bakeries of its time. With a home base in New York City, they ship nationwide and work with clients such as Williams-Sonoma, Whole Foods Market, and 1-800-Flowers. Dana's Bakery has been featured by the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Good Morning America, and various other national, nationwide publications. So welcome, Dana. And I'm going to go off screen yeah. so that Dana can have the entire Thank screen. You. Cool. Yes. Thank you for that intro. It's nice to meet everyone. Thank you for baking with me on your Friday night. T-G-I-F. Um, I'm gonna go through everything that we have here to make these amazing cereal bowl mookies. Um, if you have any questions, of course, leave it in the chat. I will try to answer them either while we are baking or at the end. If you guys have not picked up the cookbook yet, I would recommend you do so inside. I'm just gonna tell you like two things about the cookbook and then we can talk about it after. Inside, these are a hundred of my recipes, each chapter, based off of one of our famous um, flavor profiles. So Dana's Bakery makes classic American desserts, but in fun flavor profiles. So we have a birthday cake chapter, a s'mores chapter, a red velvet chapter, breakfast all day, which the cereal bowl mookie, sorry, the cereal bowl cookie is based out of. So um, check it out if you guys have any questions. I'm happy to answer it. And uh, I'm gonna take you through and just show you what you need today if you picked up your ingredients you can measure out as I'm chatting, you have the recipe. Um, but if not, just hang out, watch us bake, and uh, maybe you can make them on your own at another time. So the first really thing we fast, um, we do have that question about your cookbook recipe calls for 43 grams of Fruity Pebbles, but that's yeah. only one cup. Does this recipe call for two cups or one cup of cereal? So what you need to do is, and this is the first thing I was gonna talk about. I have everything measured out because I'm doing a lot of talking, but you wanna make a pebble, you wanna make a flower out of your Fruity Pebbles. So this is my Fruity Pebble flower. You wanna take your flour, either put it in a food processor and pulse it, or you can put it in a big Ziploc bag. Take a wine bottle. If you don't have a rolling pin, I have used a wine bottle many times. Just roll it on top and flatten it into like a ground flour. So you're gonna measure your ground up Fruity Pebbles flour. Perfect, thank you. Cool. You're welcome. So you're gonna need your Fruity Pebbles. Go ahead and grind that up. Um, 
you will need three cups of all-purpose flour. Now you can use gluten-free flour. I'm using our Dana's Bakery gluten-free flour. This is the flour that we use at the bakery in all of our items. Everything's gluten-free. We also use it in our vegan line, um, but any flour will do. You can use um, all-purpose flour, gluten-free flour, whatever. So you want to have three cups of flour, a fourth a cup of cup, a fourth a teaspoon of salt. Can you imagine if you put a fourth a cup of flour in there, that uh, salt in there, that would be really, really salty. So we need one fourth a teaspoon of salt. You need one tablespoon of baking powder. That's going to be your leavening agent. Two sticks of room temperature butter. You want this butter to be unsalted. Um, a lot of people always wonder why baking or cooking calls for unsalted butter. And the reason is most recipes call for butter. They call for salt. Sorry, guys, it's Friday. It's been a long week. Um, I'm a little fried, so bear with me, okay? But um, most recipes call for salt. When you have salted butter, you don't really know how much salt they're putting in the butter. So you could overkill the salt and ruin your, your dessert or whatever you're making. So we always call for unsalted butter. If for whatever reason you don't have unsalted butter and you just have salted, you can use it. Just omit the salt from the recipe, okay? So you want one fourth a teaspoon of salt. You want two sticks of unsalted butter and you want it to be room temperature. Anytime you're making a cookie, you want all of your ingredients to be room temperature. So your butter and also your eggs. You're going to need three room temperature eggs, okay? Three room temperature eggs. We need a little bit of vanilla extract. You are going to need one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Um, you need one cup of white chocolate chips. So I brought these back from the kitchen. I was in the car for an hour and the whole thing melted. So I'm gonna hack this up. These are mini chocolate chips, but you can use large chocolate chips. You can use chocolate chunks. You can use whatever you want. You can take a chocolate bar and hack it up with a knife. Um, I kind of like the chunks in there instead of the mini chips sometimes, because I just feel like it gives you more texture, okay? So you want your white chocolate, and then you're going to do your two cups of Lucky Charms. Now, I legit stole this from my kids. They're obsessed with Lucky Charms. I am not gonna lie. I um, am the one that picks out all the marshmallows, so you'll see that like there should be way more marshmallows in this bag. So what, they don't, what they don't know won't kill them. Um, but you want two cups of Lucky Charms, and you can use, you know, imitation brand. It doesn't matter. You just want to have an oat-based cereal that's sweet with the freeze-dried marshmallows. Um, other things that you'll need is an oven, which you should preheat to 350. So go ahead and preheat your ovens to 350 if you're baking along with me. Um, you're going to need a spatula. Anytime you're baking and you're using a standing KitchenAid mixer, you always want a spatula because in between each step, you're going to scrape the side of the bowl just to make sure everything's incorporated. Um, this is a secret weapon, a cookie scooper. You can also use an ice cream scooper, um, but anything you want them to be uniform in size. So if you don't have a scooper or you don't have an ice cream scooper, you can use a large tablespoon or maybe like a one fourth of a cup, uh, a measuring cup. Okay, so just something that all of your cookies are uniform. You will need an oven, you will need a baking sheet, and then you will need a mixer. Um, you wanna use the paddle attachment with your mixer, okay? A lot of people have standing kitchen aids. Some people have hand mixers. If you must, you can use the whisk, but when baking a cookie or a cake or anything that involves butter and sugar, you want to cream your ingredients together. And in order to properly cream your ingredients together, which will give you a nice fluffy cookie, you wanna use a paddle attachment, okay? So I feel like that is it for our equipment. I feel like that's it for our recipe and our ingredients. I have a cocktail, it's Friday. Um, Dacia, am I saying your name correctly? You are baking with your five-year-old daughter, which I love. So hopefully you have a cocktail and she has a mocktail. Um, I do that in my house with my girls. Anyway, cheers to us. Let's bake some cookies and have a good time. Cool? Okay. So the first thing that we are going to do, hopefully you have preset your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit um, and you've ground up your Fruity Pebble flour. I want you guys to measure everything. 
Montauk Hard Seltzer. I know who that is. Hello. Lots of familiar names from Instagram, which is so great. If you don't follow me on Instagram yet, it's at Dana's Bakery. Please do. I run it. That way we can stay in touch and we can be connected. Okay. Grind up your Fruity Pebbles. Set it aside. You want two cups of this. Next thing we're going to do is I want you to put your flour, your salt, and your baking soda in another container and set it aside. And I'm sorry, it's baking powder, not baking soda. That is a huge, they're similar but very different, and I make that mistake all the time. You want baking powder, not baking soda, okay? So in incorporate those dry ingredients together and then put them inside. First things first, what we're gonna do, and I am in my friend Nicole's kitchen. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that my house is under major renovation and I do not have a kitchen. So my friends are so kind to let me borrow theirs. Um, so I'm using her kitchen right now, which means they don't have my normal stand. So that's okay. What we're gonna do is take our room temperature butter, your 43 grams of Fruity Pebbles looks way less than your two cups. Um, it shouldn't look, yeah, 43 grams seems a little light for two cups for sure. I would just do, go ahead and do this. I have to check to see if there is a typo in this recipe. Um, and listen, stuff happens, it's print, it's the story of my life, but go ahead and just do the one cup um, if you're measured out, just because you know what? You're gonna taste it anyway, and I'd rather it be the right consistency and not be too dry. Go ahead and do the one cup, um, and we're just gonna see what happens. It's gonna be fine. You have a lot of cereal in there. You'll see it's gonna be great. Go ahead and put your butter, two sticks of room temperature butter in your bowl. Hello, Argentina. Kisses from New York. I'm in New York. I love that we have Argentina chiming in. All right. So we're going to move this over to the mixer. You're going to take your paddle attachment. I'm going to move you over with me um, as I get this situated. Let me see if I can move you over with me with my paddle attachment. Dana, Let we have another question. Yes. Um, the yes. flour, should it be bleached or unbleached? It doesn't matter. Okay. We're not making macaroons, so any all-purpose flour or gluten-free flour works. It does not matter if it's bleached or unbleached. If it's unbleached, it's just a little healthier, and you just have a little bit more of a different hue, right? A color hue. So don't even, don't sweat it. Whatever you have is fine. Um, we are going to go ahead and start our mixers we are going to i have to hold my laptop like this <laughs> because this is on the laptop not a phone but just go ahead and i want you to whip this with your paddle attachment until it's spread out and nice and creamy if your butter is room temperature you should not have a problem doing this and it shouldn't take long at all okay hi sawyer say hi guys that's sawyer that's one of Lenny's best friends. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna try to do this one-handed. Take your spatula, scrape down the side of the bowl. Scrape it down to make sure that everything gets in the middle. When making anything, I'm always a huge advocate, as I said, of scraping down the side of the bowl. You wanna make sure that all of your ingredients are in your cookies and not stuck to the side, okay? Another thing that's like a total pet peeve of mine, when people scrape their spatulas off on the side of the bowl, I'm like, you're just making more work for yourself. Just go ahead and stick it on the bottom. Makes life so much easier, okay? Once everything looks like this, you're gonna take your granulated sugar and you're gonna pour it into the bowl with your butter. Now this is that cream method that I was talking about. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say, let's start to cream this together. Start on low and then go up to medium. And we're gonna cream this together for a full minute. And then we're gonna stop, scrape down the side of the bowl, add our fruity pebble powder. And then we're gonna keep on going. You're gonna notice that this mixture right now looks really, really chunky. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, but you're going to see it looks really, really piecey. It looks really, really chunky. But as you start to put it on high, 
you're going to notice it's going to change consistency and it's going to get really creamy. And this is this is basically what what we do. This is called the creaming method, and this is so important anytime you're baking. So I'm just going to move away from the mixer for a second so you can hear me. When you want really, really nice, big, fluffy cookies, anytime that a recipe, or even a cake, anytime that a recipe calls for butter and sugar, you want to cream it together. And I am so guilty of this. I used to, as soon as it was incorporated, I would stop. And I would say, okay, it's it's mixed together, it's done, and I wouldn't do the full cream. Um, and you can't, hi, Dad. You can't do that because if you do that, you're not fully creaming your ingredients. Okay, so you want to cream it for a full. What do we say here? We tell you to to really cream it for a good three to five minutes. So I'm gonna stop the mixer. You'll see it looks so different already. Okay, I'm gonna stop the mixer. I'm gonna lift the head. I'm going to scrape down the bottom of the bowl. Remember, I want to get all of my ingredients in here. And you'll see that there's, you can hear it, there's sugar stuck to the side of the bowl. So we really want to mix this in. And we have to cream this for a really long time to get it nice and creamy and not chunky like this. So now I'm going to add my Fruity Pebble powder. So let's go ahead and put this in here. I'm going to add my Fruity Pebble powder. And sorry if I'm making you nauseous. I'm trying to do this and open up all of these these containers with my hands. Oh, thank you. I have an assistant, Darren in the house. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna whip it together. And now I'm gonna let this roll for two minutes on high. So let's do it. Let's lock it down. Let's let this go for two minutes. And I'm gonna check back in on it in a minute. And while we're doing that, do you guys have any questions? If not, I can just like tell you about my day, you know, <laughs> any of our other ingredients. Um, I can tell you about the cookbook, whatever you want. But um, I'll great. ask you a question. Um, yeah, what inspired great. your love of baking? What'd you say? I can't hear you over the mixer. Oh, you're totally fine. Uh, what inspired your love of baking? So I always used to bake with my grandmas, okay? So one grandma was in Israel, one grandma was in Jersey, and they always used to bake and they used to cook. And I just always grew up loving food and especially loving dessert. And I always loved to bake. Um, it was like a stress reliever for me. I love the whole process. And baking is very much a science, right? You can't just do a little dab of this and a little sprinkle of that. Everything is measured to the exact gram. You have to follow the recipes. You have to cream your ingredients um the right way and it's just very therapeutic for me so i kind of fell in love with it at an early age and when i was a photo editor at muscle and fitness magazine i went to school for photo um that's what i used to do in my past life i was um, a photo editor um but i wasn't really passionate or happy about it so when i quit my job i was like what can i do that i really love i just want to do something that i love every day and i realized that you know culinary was it Baking was it for me. Um, so I enrolled in culinary school and that's how that's how it started. Uh, we have a question from Adam who asked, what's your favorite recipe? That's a great question. In the book, my favorite recipe in the book, that's so hard because they're all so good. Um, I love the strawberry shortcake in the basic bitch chapter. Um, I have a chapter called The Basic Bitch. Now, it is not, it's, it's basically like your, all of our, all of our chapters are like, um, you know, peanut butter and jelly and, and um, cup of joe, like coffee and things like that. The Basic Bitch chapter is all classic American desserts that you don't need to put your own fun spin on it. So we have our quarantine banana bread in there. We have, um, our sugar cookies in there and the strawberry shortcake, which is one of my favorite desserts. It reminds me of my grandma. That's one. And I also really love our seven layer chocolate cake. There's so many. That's so hard to choose. That's so hard to choose. That's like a trick question. Okay. I'm stopping this real quick. I'm doing a scrape down. Can you guys see what I'm doing? It's doing a scrape down. And then I'm going to let it go for like another minute on high. Let's just give it one more scrape down. Just so you know, for those of you who are baking along, this recipe is a very gritty, dry recipe. Um, you will see that this almost looks like kinetic sand. You can't see, because 
I'm doing this one handed, but it almost looks like kinetic sand. It's supposed to feel that way, okay? You're using actual fruity pebbles, which is a rice cereal. So it's very drying. And then you're putting other cereal in there, which is also dry. So this is not a wet dough. Um, it almost feels like a gritty, um, a gritty, you know, it's just gritty. So just giving you a heads up. I don't want you to worry when you see that. Just trust the process. It works out. Um, JC is making the comment that um, with one cup, it doesn't end up looking like that. Should they add more? So I actually ended up just using one cup so that I could do it with you. I put, basically put mine in half. Um, you can totally add more if you want to. I wish that I could see what theirs looks like. Um, then I could see. Um, <laughs> but you can add a little bit more if you want. Did you do one cup of ground fruity pebbles? Yes. Yes. I used one cup. It should look like that. Um, go for the cup. One cup is 43 grams. It should be the same. As long as you're using the ground. If you're doing 43 ground, yeah, it should be the same. If you're doing 43 grams of um, unground fruity pebbles, it's going to be a lot less. But if you're doing 43 grams, which is one cup of ground fruity pebble flour, it should look like that. If it doesn't, you can always add a little bit more. The fruity pebbles, just so you know, the Fruity Pebbles is really just for flavor. Um, the most important thing that you're putting in to actually make it a cookie is the flour. So um, you could definitely put a little bit more in. Don't stress, we're baking, it's fun. They're gonna come out great, so don't worry. But yes, if it doesn't look like that, you can always add a little bit more in, okay? This isn't the ER, it's all good. <laughs> all good, this is a no stress situation. We're just here to have fun and make some really good cookies. Um, all right, cool. So next thing, we are going to do our eggs. I'm gonna crack my eggs. I'm gonna turn off my mixer. I'm gonna turn off my mixer. I'm gonna crack my eggs. I'm gonna let you see what I'm doing. I like to add them one at a time slowly into the mixer. So I'm going to bring my cup over. And since I'm kind of doing this one handed, um, I'm going to pre crack my eggs, but I don't know how you guys crack your eggs, cracking your egg on the side of the bowl. Let's pretend this is my mixing bowl. Another pet peeve. You can't do that. If you do that, there's such a great chance. Even the best chef, pastry chef, doesn't matter. Um, line cook, whoever, you can always have a chance of getting, um, eggshells in whatever you're making. So please don't do that. Crack them on the side. Instead of making a mess on your counter, there's a rule of thumb. If you take your eggs and you crack them into each other, only one will crack at a time. So I'm just going to show you. This is how I crack my eggs. Give it a crack. Put them in there. Take the next one. I can't check Instagram, but I'll definitely check it later so I can see what you were talking about and we can get to the bottom of it on our own, okay? See, there you go. I cracked my eggs in the cup. I'm gonna bring it over with me, but you guys can crack your eggs. Just add it one at a time, okay? So you're going to do, I'm going to move this. I know this is really interesting. I was explaining earlier, normally when I do a live, I am on a tripod with a computer. I've never used this system before and I'm fascinated and I really love the platform, but it's interesting baking with, um, with a laptop when you're holding a laptop. So I'm gonna resume position. I'm going to scrape down the side of the bowl because you know we have to do that in between each and every step, okay? So gonna scrape down the side of the bowl. Make sure you also get the bottom. Just make sure that it's all incorporated over there. Sometimes you have butter that's stuck at the bottom. So go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to add one egg. I'm gonna put my mixer on. Once it's incorporated, I'm gonna add my second egg. I'll add my third egg, and then I'm gonna add my vanilla extract. This is adding some moisture into our batter like so. I'm gonna add the next one in. I'm gonna go ahead, do it a little bit higher. Now I'm gonna add my vanilla extract. Now vanilla extract is just for flavor, okay? If for whatever reason you have an allergy, you hate vanilla extract, whatever the case may be, just leave it out. Um, when you're dealing with chocolate, 
Okay. So like when you're making a chocolate ganache or a chocolate cake, a lot of the times they call for vanilla. Um, and that also just brings out the flavor of the cocoa. You can use just a little, a little something, something for you to know. You can use, um, you can use like uh, a very strong coffee. You can do Grand Marnier. You can do other things. You can use other things instead of vanilla when dealing with chocolate. But for this, I don't think that coffee would taste very good. So I'm sticking to the vanilla. If it ain't broke, right? Don't fix it. Okay. I'm going to mix this up one more time. And then we're going to add our dry ingredients. How are we doing? Do we have any questions? I'm going to give it a minute just for to let people catch up. Because for those of you who are baking along, I know I talk fast, but I don't want to bake fast. I want you guys to be able to follow along and have no questions or problems as we're going. Yeah, um, let's do this one really fast. Um, Amy asked, what was your favorite part of the cookbook making process? So the cookbook making process is really interesting. I um, had no idea how much work really went into a cookbook. And I got the, the book deal before quarantine, before COVID hit, and then I got to write my book during quarantine. So I had a lot of time when I wasn't with the kids, I was writing the cookbook. Um, but the weird thing was, is that I had a hard time testing the recipes as I was writing them because you couldn't get ingredients, right? You went to the supermarket, you couldn't get flour, you couldn't get sugar, you couldn't find yeast anywhere. I had to order yeast on Amazon. Um, so it was a really interesting experience. I think the hardest part for me was having to write all of the text. I'm not a writer, um, so I had to do intros for every recipe and I had to have intros for every chapter and like a whole about me and a bio and all that stuff. So that was the most challenging, but the most rewarding was, um, Normally when you, when you, someone makes a cookbook, they have a whole huge crew. They have like a photographer with three assistants and a, a prop stylist and um, recipe testers and food stylists and all these things. And really it was just Jesse, our photographer, me and our head baker, um, Tiffany, and we did everything ourselves. So I felt like I was back in editorial and I was making all of these recipes and I was styling all the photo shoots and, um, it felt back to basics and I felt like I was really utilizing my old photo skills, you know, that I, that I used for so many years when I was a photo editor. So that was really, really cool. Um, and, and I like love doing it, you know, it was very rewarding for me. I felt like, all right, like you can always apply whatever you used to do in your past life to your future life. You know, you can always, you still have that skill set. It was just like a very cool, I don't know. It was a nice experience. It was like really fun for me. So that was the best part. Um, all right. I see, I see that someone said all good. Florencia said she's all good. So should we go ahead and add our flour? Yeah. Let's go ahead and add our flour, our baking powder, and our salt. Now, guys, this is so important. When you add your dry ingredients, anytime you add dry ingredients to a mixer, do not add it all at once, number one, and do not put your mixer on high from zero because you are going to kick up the flour all over the place and you're going to make the world's biggest mess and you'll hate me for it. So we're going to add this in slow increments, okay? And then unlike the creaming method, as soon as we are done incorporating our dry ingredients, we are going to stop mixing. You don't want to over mix once you start putting your flour in. So I'm gonna do this in like three or four parts. I'm gonna put this in, go to low. You can see that it kicks up a little bit. Once this incorporates, I'm gonna scrape down the sides of my bowl because you see that there's a lot of flour here on the side of the bowl. It only takes a couple seconds, okay? Scraping down the side of my bowl to make sure that I have all of my ingredients inside my cookies, not on my bowl and I'm going to add more flour and then repeat until all of my flour is incorporated. Okay, so I'm gonna scrape down. By the way, if you guys are interested or you are wondering where my beautiful spatula is from, this is the confetti spatula from Gear. Can you see this? It's so cute, it's silicone, you can use it in hot or cold. It's one of my favorite spatulas. We worked with them on the launch for the book and I'm obsessed with all of their products. They even have like little cocktail straws. Um, it's so clever. Anyway, that's gear in case you guys need the cutest spatula ever. 
Um, as I'm adding more dry ingredients, you're gonna see that the dough is starting to get thicker. Okay, so it's getting a little thicker. Just scraping down the sides of the bowl. This is your friendly reminder to make sure that you have your ovens preheated, okay? Sometimes people forget, they get so excited, they forget to preheat their ovens. So you should go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna finish the rest of it off. But I added a lot here, okay? So I'm just gonna go slow, let it do its thing. You can hear the mixer working a little bit more. I'm gonna give one more scrape down. I'm gonna keep all of the ingredients in the bowl. I'm giving one more scrape down. And then we're gonna add our cereal. Woohoo! Now, something to note, um, I'm gonna let you guys get here for a second, but something to note, if your batter is super duper dry, you don't have to add the full two cups of cereal, okay? The cereal is really there to add texture. Um, and of course, who doesn't love marshmallows and who doesn't love mini chocolate chips? Um, and I'm actually gonna chop these chocolate chips while we're talking and I'm waiting for you guys to catch up because that's the fun part. Adding your, um, adding your toppings and adding all of your inclusions is the fun part. I know you can't see my face, but I'm gonna talk to you as I go. Um, that's always been the fun part for me. And with the cookbook, this is kind of what put Dana's Bakery on the map, and this is kind of what we do anyway. But I want you to feel comfortable to make these recipes your own. So if my recipe calls for white chocolate chips and you don't have white chocolate chips, don't you, or you don't like white chocolate chips, don't use white chocolate chips. If you don't like Fruity Pebbles or you don't like Lucky Charms, guess what? Don't use Lucky Charms. I know that baking is a science, but my recipes um, are fun and they're meant to be made your own. We like to color outside the lines. I like to put my spin on classic desserts. So I love for you guys to do the same. What You can chat it in the thing if your hands aren't dirty. What would you add into this cookie? Like maybe instead of white chocolate chips, you can do dark chocolate chips. Um, maybe instead of fruity pebbles, you do cocoa pebbles and you add, you know, Count Chocula or like some other type of cereal. So you're kind of staying in the same vein, but you're, you're making it your own. So if you, you know, don't want to add all the cereal at the end, you don't have to. It's um, basically the world is your oyster. You can make it how you want. Okay. So. I'm just gonna show you. White chocolate is really, really soft, so you don't need a mega knife. But I'm gonna Tabian, do it anyway. Tabian um, said, uh, could you put cr cookie crisp in? Totally, but the cookie crisp, I would just break up into little pieces. Mm -hmm. They're large, okay? So you don't wanna have like giant cookies in there unless you do. Try it out, but you can totally do cookie crisps for sure. I haven't had that cereal in forever. Cookie crisps is a good cereal. Um, so you'll see, I'm leaving some of these chunks open. I love, if you order from the bakery, we have these chocolate chip mookies. Um, it's a chocolate macaroon baked inside a chocolate chip cookie. And we have chips and chunks in our cookies because I love textures. Hence why I'm telling you guys to uh, put cereal in your stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in here just so I can bring it over easily. Can they use Fruit Loops instead of Fruity Pebbles? Yeah, you can use Fruit Loops. We, you know, the, the base of this recipe came from our cereal bowl mookie at the bakery. So the bakery is gluten-free. So we have to use Fruity Pebbles because it's gluten-free, but you can totally use any cereal you want. Um, and also one other thing I'll say before we add the fun stuff in is that you have to know how to read a room, right? You have to know how to read your recipe. So if you find that something is a little bit too dry, um, unless the recipe says this is going to be a dry dough like I did, um, if something doesn't look right to you, you should feel comfortable to know what to look for and maybe make a, a decision to add something else. And that's really important when you're making macaroons. I always tell everyone, it's not necessarily about following the recipe or the time, but it's about knowing what to look for. So the more you bake and the more you get comfortable doing this, you'll see, listen, this egg thing looks a little funky. Maybe I need to whip it a little longer. Um, maybe 
I needed to add a little bit of milk because I need this to be a little bit softer. You usually want to stick with your recipe, but you also want to know what to look for in terms of if something doesn't look right. Like some of you guys said, you know what, my measurement looks funky. It doesn't look like there's enough fruity pebbles in here. I said, okay, add a little bit more and that's okay. Um, make it your own. And as you start to cook and you start to bake, you're going to figure out, you know what, maybe, maybe I know what I'm doing after all. I'm making this my own. Okay. I'm actually going to take my fruity pebbles, not my fruity pebbles. I'm taking my lucky charms. I'm going to put that in first. I'm going to put the fruity pebbles in, or not the fruity pebbles. I'm putting the white chocolate in after because white chocolate is really soft and I don't want it to... I don't want it to um, to get broken down and just get totally whipped into the batter. So I'm not using a measuring cup. I'm using my hand because I'm trying to get more marshmallows than dry cereal. Um, but then again, this is just, this is an added bonus. So if you don't have a, a true two cups here, it's not a big deal. Um, this cereal right here is meant to give you texture, okay? You bite into it and you literally have the crunch of the cereal and it's so nice. So that's what this is for. Your dough is done. You could technically bake it without the cereal. It just wouldn't be the same. Okay. I'm going to add my chocolate and now we're going to close it. I'm going to lock this because there's a lot of stuff in here on low just until it's incorporated and then your dough is done. You might need to hold it to just make sure that everything sticks in there. And that's it. Here's your dough and it's gorgeous. I'm going to take this, knock it in, make sure it's all in my bowl. And then I'm going to put the computer down and I'm going to bring this over so we can scoop our cookies. How are you guys doing? Are we okay? Is everyone at the same place as me? As I did. Daisy, I gave a thumbs up. Cool. Also, I definitely want to just eat that cookie dough. It looks so yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, it smells so good, too. It's like, it's a problem. Uh, Heather is ready to scoop. Cool. And cool. Davian said, the dough is amazing. Let's scoop. And I'm going to do this. So now one thing about, um, one thing that's great about cookie dough, let me just rinse my hand because I know I'm going to have to touch my computer and I don't want to ruin it. Um, one thing that's really great about cookie dough is that you can freeze almost any cookie dough. Um, you don't want to freeze a block of cookie dough, but you want to scoop your cookie dough balls and you can literally leave them wrapped in the freezer and you can bake them off straight from the freezer whenever you want fresh cookies. So I would, and actually this is something I tell everyone, the, the trick to a big fat cookie if you want your cookies to look like this, where they keep their shape and, it, shape and, it's, a, and it's a giant ball, you wanna use a scoop because the higher your ball, um, the, the larger it's going to be when it bakes and it won't flatten as much. You also wanna put it in the freezer. Freeze it overnight, bake it straight from the freezer. It'll keep its formation. That's the trick to making all of our cookies and our mookies. We make them, we freeze all of the dough balls and then we bake them off the next day. So that's a little, that's free. That's a little pointer for you guys. I'd say don't tell everyone my secret, but it's okay. There's enough to go around. As long as you guys make amazing cookies, that's all that matters. Okay. Someone should make this a candle. It smells so good. Okay. Um, you also want to make sure that all of your cookies are the same size, right? So that they bake evenly. If you have one cookie that's smaller and one cookie that's larger, you are going to get, um, you're gonna get uneven baking, okay? So I'm taking my cookie scooper like this. This is a nonstick tray, okay? Put it on parchment if you don't have a nonstick tray. And I'm gonna scoop it. Another thing that I say is when you get your cookie ball, do not roll it. If you roll it, you're hiding all of those crevices and all of those grooves, which is what makes the cookie so nice when it bakes. Um, so you don't want to touch your cookie. Don't mess with your cookies. Just take it, scoop it, put it down, give yourself a couple inches in between in case you have any spreading. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to bake them. I would encourage you guys, if you can, 
keep a couple of your cookie balls frozen and bake them off tomorrow. I saw that there was a question. You don't need to alter the time, but this goes back to what I was saying. Everyone's ovens bake differently. So I write, write a recipe based on my oven. My oven could be stronger than your oven. You need to know what to look for. When baking cookies, a rule of thumb, you want it to be baked properly. You want it to be a little bit browned um, and golden around the edges, but the middle should be a little bit underdone. And the reason for that is that when you take your, uh, your cookies out of the oven, you're not, you're not gonna transfer these to a wire rack. Even if you do, these cookies are hot and they're going to continue to bake until they cool off. So if you bake it all the way through, once they cool, they're going to be really hard and they're gonna be really crispy. I want these to be soft, chewy cookies. So you don't wanna overbake them. So you never want to bake until it's fully overdone. And that's why, you know, you could bake it 350, eight to 10 minutes, but it might take you 14 to 15 minutes. Even if it's not frozen, you just need to know what to look for. That's just a, that's just a, like an average time, but it's not the rule. Okay. So just, that's what I'm talking about when I say, just be comfortable to know what you need in the kitchen, be comfortable to know what to look for. When baking cookies, you want to just look for, crispy brown on the outside, a little bit underdone on the top. Same thing goes for a cake when you put that cake tester in there. You want it to come out a little bit sticky, not totally underbaked where the middle is mushy, but if you take it out and it's and it's clean, you overbaked because by the time it cools, it's gonna be really dry. And I'm just gonna scoop the rest of them. How are you guys doing? Are we scooping? Are we feeling good? I know that no one else can talk but me, so I'm just gonna pretend you guys said, yeah, I'm feeling great, <laughs> doing good. I'm having so much fun baking with you on Friday and my kitchen smells amazing. You're welcome. These cookies just look amazing. <laughs> I lost the, put that scoop back in there. So I'm gonna put these in the oven over here. I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes because I know that eight minutes is on the lighter end. Um, and then I'm going to save this dough and I'm going to freeze it in balls. I can tell you guys how to um, freeze it. Let me just put this in the oven and I'll be right back. And if you guys have any questions, put them below. This is the upper oven. I know. You want to bake your middle to top rack, by the way. Middle to top rack. And... Can someone set their timer for eight minutes or 10 minutes and let me know when 10 minutes is up, please? Yes, I can do that. Thank you. All right, so we do have some more questions if you would like to answer. Before we do the questions, I just want to yeah. tell you more things since I'm talking about cookies and scooping and stuff. Um, when you freeze your cookie balls, right here, you're going to lay them nicely like on, you can either lay them flat on a Ziploc bag, close it, and then gently put it in the freezer or you can put it in a Ziploc, um, what's it called, a Tupperware, like a large Tupperware. Close it, wrap it really well so it doesn't get freezer burn and then just pop it in the freezer. Um, even if they're touching because they're in ball formation, you can just snap them apart easily. Pop it on your sheet and bake them. That's all I had to say. Perfect. We can do the questions now. Yeah. Um, someone, there it is. Um, you asked um, the most stressful part of the cookbook process. What is the most stressful part of the cookbook The process? most stressful part of the cookbook process was um, getting everything done by the deadline and doing all of that text. Doing, I'm good at like Instagram captions. It's limited. But writing... <laughs> And I guess I shouldn't have stressed out about it because there's editors that are making sure that I don't have any grammatical errors, but that was hard. You're writing a hundred recipes and all of the intros need to be different. At some point you just want to be like, I have this recipe and I'm putting it in the book because it tastes really good. I know you're going to like it. And I know that that's not going to fly. So I had a couple of moments where some of mine were a little bit like that. And they were like, can you just dig a little deeper, you know? tell us a story. Why do you love this recipe? What's the origin? And when you're trying to bang them all out so that you hit your deadline, it's a little tiring, but it's fine. I did it. <laughs> and they fixed my grammar, so we're fine. <laughs> Great. Um, for your dark, 
for your dark chocolate recipes, should we use a specific percentage of cacao? Um, unsweetened cocoa, yeah. Yeah, unsweetened um, cocoa. Just unsweetened. It doesn't have to be Dutch process. If there's ever a recipe that needs something specific like Dutch um, process or a certain percentage, it will tell you. Um, all of my recipes include ingredients that can be easily found at most um, supermarket. So you can even use Hershey's cocoa powder, just make sure it's, you know, unsweetened. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, how long can the cookies be in the freezer? Forever. Like, <laughs> like you could, you could keep them in there for like eight months, not forever, but like eight months. Um, That's forever in the food, in the food world. What was the first recipe you ever created? like ever created like for the bakery or in existence for the bakery. I think that it was the thin mint. It was either the red mm, birthday cake, red velvet and thin mint macaroon and thin mint macaroon was the hardest one for me to do. Cause I don't really love, I have like a love hate relationship with mint and chocolate. Um, I love a York peppermint patty and we have homemade York peppermint patty recipe in the cookbook. Actually, it's got like fresh pieces of mint leaves in it. It's really good. Um, but I'm like like those hot those mint hot chocolate like culotta things that like Dunkin' Donuts like I just can't get down with that. So when I was creating the recipe, I didn't realize that if you use mint extract, it's going to taste like a menthol cigarette. But if you use mint oil, it tastes like a York peppermint patty. And it took me way too many tries to figure that out. Um, but that was one of my first recipes. The other one was like s'mores, red velvet, birthday cake. All the ones that we have is like our eleven always available flavors. Um, those were really a lot of the, the OG ones. Those were like some of the first ones I created. And then as the bakery developed, we did um, the rainbow black and white cookie. And then we did the mookie, which is the macaroon baked inside a cookie. And now we have a flavor of the month for those. So like we have all the regulars and then we have the flavor that changes once a month. Amazing. Um... For everyone watching, feel free to ask more questions. Um, if not, you'll just hear me ask my questions. So, <laughs> um, next question though: um, What would you say to someone who has like just started to bake and just started improving their baking skills? I think that it's just practice makes perfect. You want to have fun. You need to not be stressed. People, I think, get so nervous about baking that they mess up the recipe because they're so nervous that they're going to get it right or they feel rushed. I see that a lot with macaroons, especially in our classes. So I think you just want to start and gravitate with recipes that look good to you and that you're excited about making. And then just follow the recipe. You know, don't skimp on any of the steps. You know, if it's supposed to be room temperature, Make it room temperature. If you got to make, if you forgot to make your butter room temperature, there's tricks and hacks that you can Google that will give you room temperature butter within like 10 seconds. Um, same thing with a room temperature egg. You may want to make sure that you're not skipping that creaming step. Um, that would be like the most important thing. Try recipes that excite you, um, and think of it as like a fun challenge. Just Do you have a favorite tip or hack for butter? Uh, just in general, like anything. A, <laughs> a lot of hacks. Um, you guys going, bye. Thanks for letting me use your kitchen. You look lovely. Have the best dinner. Um, my friends are going out to dinner. They let me borrow their kitchen in case you missed that. Hi, thanks. <laughs> now we can have our party. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. Um, hacks. I have so many. Um, if you or vegan and you don't want to use eggs or you can't for whatever reason, one egg is the equivalent of a fourth a cup of unsweetened um, applesauce. So like, that's a great one. I have so many and I have a lot of them in the book also. Um, I should probably start a thing on my website about hacks. I'm gonna do that. Check back in on my website in a little bit or on my Instagram, I'll do a highlight and you'll see the hacks. I post them all the time on Instagram, I have a ton. Too many for right now, and it's, and it's escaping me, but I have a lot. Amazing. Um, let's do one more question before the timer is going to go off. Um, Amy asked, are there any recipes that you developed for the cookbook that didn't make it, but you loved? Yeah, so um, there was like a lot of recipes that could go for book two, if we sell enough of book one. Um, we had a whole 
Well, we have the bonus chapter, which is all like cocktail inspired desserts. So that is really fun. But you can get that if you email us. That's like a, if you get the cookbook, you get a bonus PDF. I had a, a babka recipe that had cereal in it, of course. Um, so that one was really fun. Um, the babka is the one that I wish made it in and it didn't, but hopefully on the next round, because I love a good babka. And I find that they're pretty tricky to make. It had like cinnamon toast crunch in it. Ooh, like, that sounds good. Yeah, you like crushed it up and rolled it in the layers. Oh, so good. So we are 15 good. seconds from the timer. I'm gonna um, check. <laughs> I think I'm gonna probably need another minute or two, but let me check real quick. You guys check yours too. Let me know if you're done. I'm so sorry to everyone watching for the ice cream truck outside my window. If you can hear that. I hear that. So mine's not done, but I just want to show you what it looks like when it's almost done. You'll see the formation. So you can see um, how I didn't roll my cookie ball, right? I didn't roll it. I left all of the ridges in, which is so important to get that nice signature look that you want. Um, there's no browning, okay? And it's still really, really soft. So I'm gonna put this in. I think it needs another like three, I'm gonna check it in three minutes, three to four minutes, okay? But you can see the cereal, you can see it looks really, really good, um, but it's not done yet. So I'm gonna put it back in for a couple more minutes. If you guys are using a convection oven, um, a convection oven, just so you know, is really strong because it circulates air. So if you're baking in a regular standard oven, it's still great. But if you're doing specific desserts like macaroons or you're doing a souffle, sometimes you might not souffle because it'll, it'll fall. But sometimes you want to rotate your tray. You don't need to do that with cookies. But if you are using a convection oven, you don't want to change your time. You want to change your temperature. So you always want to put it 25 to 50 degrees lower. So I would say like 300 to 325 for your oven um, because it, it's a lot stronger and it cooks a lot faster. Uh, Daisha needs a few more minutes as well. Okay. So, perfect. I did say it right. Daisha. Did I say Daisha or did, did I say, I think I said Daisha. I think I might've said it wrong. Genetics. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rebecca said, what is the best part and most challenging part of having your own business slash bakery? The best part is that I literally love what I do every day. I get to make my own schedule. I have two young kids. I recently just moved very far away from the bakery. So, um, you know, for me, having that freedom to be able to do that is great. But the the, you know, the catch 22 is I'm always working. So I'm always on my phone, uh, whether I'm like answering emails or I, or I have meetings or Zooms, everything is virtual right now, right? Or um, I'm answering you guys on social media, um, whatever it is, I'm always working. Um, thankfully I can do it from wherever. So that's like a catch 22, um, but I love it so much that I don't mind. Um, and then also, you know, I get to build an amazing team of people around me who genuinely love what they're doing as much as I do. And it's really cool to see people care about your vision um, like you do and, and get to surround yourself with those people every day. And I think that that, you know, also just goes to good work culture. I think everyone's happy working at Dana's Bakery for the most part, hopefully they are, but we have a lot of fun. We work hard. So when you work hard, you have to have fun or else it's not worth it. Uh, Davian asked, uh, what score did Adam give these cookies? Adam, are you still on here? So in case you didn't know, Adam is my husband, if we're talking about the same Adam, um, and he loves to do taste tests of, we, we love to do taste tests regardless of everything, but he loves to do taste tests of my food. And he is a very, just because he's my husband does not mean he is throwing me any bones. He is like cutthroat, honest, and he's very picky. Um, so the perfect 10 brownie is actually dedicated to him in the cookbook because I made these brownies and I thought that they were amazing. And he rated them a 7.3 and Instagram like lit him up and they couldn't believe that he gave it such a bad rating because he said he likes boxed brownies better than my brownies. So obviously I love a good challenge. I accepted the challenge and I redid the recipe and it's in the cookbook. It's called the Perfect Ten Brownie. But I don't. I think that Adam really likes this cookie. I, he had the Mookie. 
which is um, basically this cookie with a fruity pebble macaroon in the middle. Um, and I'm pretty sure he ate them all when I brought them home. So I'm going to go ahead, the timer. I'm gonna go ahead and said, it's a 10. I think he like, or at least a 9.5 because it's very, very hard to get a 10, but he loves this cookie. I'm gonna check on my cookies, speaking of. Like Dana said, um, to get a second cookbook, buying them certainly helps. Um, just a reminder that you're, there is a link to buy a copy of the book. It will be signed down there. Um, so just a reminder. I'm going to do another two minutes. It's starting okay. to get burned on the outside, but it's not enough. I want a little bit more color. So two more minutes, I should be good to go. Perfect. I'll set the time. And this is also not my oven, you see? It's like, you just need to know what to look for, to trust the process, trust your gut. And when you bake a lot of dessert and you eat it like I do, you have a gut and you can trust it. <laughs> it is what it is. What's one um, recipe that everyone has to try in this cookbook? Let's see, shall we? Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, hold on. So that's the seven layer chocolate cake that I was telling you about. It's amazing. I don't like a chocolate cake that's too dense or rich. Um, it's rich, but it's not like you feel like you need to drink a whole gallon of milk after. It's not like a hard, rich, um, dense cake. These are the Funfetti Twinkies. I'm just gonna show you a couple because I love them all. And see, everyone keeps on asking that and that's such a hard question. Um, this is the Angel Food Cake, but obviously we made it rainbow. Did you see? For you guys who follow me, there is a little five-year-old boy who made this rainbow food cake and his mom posted a whole video of him doing all of the steps and he's incredible. The rainbow angel hair food cake is one of the more challenging recipes in my book and he did it and he's five. So you have no excuses. You can do any of these. This is the giant macaroon cake. It's tie dye, there's glitter on it. Um, we have our rainbow black and white cookies in here. They're all good. I, I don't have a favorite. I mean, you can't, that's such a trick question. Chocolate Amy, cakes. Amy did ask that, uh, did, do your daughters have a favorite? Anything. Lenny is still <laughs> my kid and she will eat it all. She is not, she's an equal opportunist like her mom. Um, here's the homemade peppermint patty. So you see those little bits in the center? That's fresh mint. Ooh, that sounds so good. Yeah, it's really good. Um, this is the flourless chocolate. Okay, my cookies are probably ready. I'm going to take them out. And then I can just show you all the rest of the recipes. Yeah, they're good. I'm going to take them out and let them cool. And then I will bring my computer over and show you. So now you wanna let these cool, okay? They're gonna be really hot. If you pick them up and they're hot, they're gonna break. So how do I turn off my friend's oven? Oh, there we go. That oven was so loud. Okay, let me show you. So can you see how they're brown on the bottom? They're still sizzling. It's amazing. It's like it looks so good. Up. Yeah, um, they're really good. So they're brown on the bottom. You can kind of see they're brown. Let me see if I can hold this and show you without burning myself. Brown on the bottom. Um, and done, but still a little mushy and soft in the middle. If I, if I, I'm going to, I'm going to ruin one just to show you. Like it, it, it comes apart, like it's still soft, but it's, it's hard. So when this cools, it's going to be like amazing, chewy goodness. And you're going to get those bits of like, um, the cereal, the marshmallows, you'll get your chocolate in there. You have all these textures. It smells so good. How, for those of you who had your issue with the Fruity Pebbles and the measurements, how did yours come out? Are we doing okay? Well, Jennifer's um, apparently look the same and really? the kitchen smells insane, so. They're done and smell amazing, awesome. See, you can't go wrong. Cereal is just added deliciousness. Right. That's it. Well, 
it's almost eight o'clock, so it's time to wrap up a bit. Cool. Um, if anyone did bake along, be sure to take a picture and tag us on social media, Please. both the bookshop and Dana. Um, I, I really want to see it. So <laughs> people just need to know. A lot of people are private on Instagram. Um, I'm not because I overshare, but I respect everyone's privacy. If you're private and you post a photo, whether it's on your feed or like in stories or it's in your um, grid, if you're private, even if you tag us, we cannot see. We don't even get an alert. So a lot of the times people think that I'm icing them or I'm just ignoring their message. But unless you physically write us a message and send us the photo um, as an attachment, we won't see it. So please um, show us whatever you make. And if you're private, just take that extra step and just send us a DM and let us know that you made it so we can see it. Yeah, um, I'd love to see it. And I'll repost the ones um, on our social media that we get. Yeah, perfect. Well, thank you so much, Dana. Um, to you. everyone else watching, um, we do have more events coming up this week. And not this week. We have more events coming up next week. Um, we have author talks, um, a shop talk. We actually have another cookbook event um, with a book called Root and Nourish. Um, and that one's like a holistic healing type of cooking. So keep that in mind. Um, everyone buy Dana's Bakery right down there. There's a link. <laughs> yes, please. And it'll be a signed copy. So um, this is one great place to get a signed copy because on Amazon, they're not signed. Yep. And also support your local indie books. Exactly. Yes, that's the most important thing, of course. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Dana. Thank you for having me. Thanks for spending your Friday with us, everyone. It was really such a pleasure to bake with you.